Hi, it's Tony Bear in New York City for the 9-11 Memorial. Tenth year anniversary. Had a great time and a sad time. I was lucky. John Boyd was on my airplane and I got to talk to him and he got to talk about 9-11. The video is about 9-11. It's a long documentary. So if you'd like short videos, long place for you. If you want to see and learn more about 9-11, this is the video for you. Here's the video. Can you say something about 9-11 real quick? Your, your thoughts on 9-11? Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's... Uh, I, I think it's outrageous that the, uh, that the heroes of 9-11 were not invited to the ceremony on, uh, at Ground Zero. Why not? And uh, they said they didn't have room for them. Oh. So, so it's, uh, you know, and they, they're not inviting any clergy to say prayers on this very important day. And what is needed is, uh, you know, people to address this in the, in the proper manner, uh, not, not in a political way. So anyway, but I'm here to, 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 to uh, spend time with the families and with the firemen and policemen, and, uh, uh, and, and, and I'll be saying prayers on the morning of 9-11 uh, at firehouses. And one more thing. Do you have a shout out to Venice Beach? Shout out to Venice Beach? Yeah. Venice Beach? Good to see you. Wow. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you, man. I'm, I'm not going to sell this. This is going to be a documentary. Okay, whatever it is. So you guys are here for uh, what? I, I was deployed here 10 years ago, and I worked at Ground Zero, and I represented Valley City Fire. You, you at Ground Zero? How was that? I'm a trauma counselor. That's for awful, man. City fire I, I had a breakdown over that. And I wasn't even here. Uh, I arrived two days after, and we worked at Ground Zero. We were there for two weeks. And I'm coming back to find a little closure, and hopefully that these ceremonies are going to turn into more positive things and to reflect on the negative things that happened in this time. And your name? My name is Gwen Duyao. Wow. Thank you for your for your work. Sure, you're and welcome. Sir? I'm a uh, Firefighter paramedic uh, Brandon Tudio. I'm her son. I wasn't on the job yet, but uh, I remember that day. Now I work at our dispatch for LA City, and we're just here for the weekend too. And is your brother right here? No, it's my dad. Wow. Are you a firefighter too? No, I'm not a firefighter. Well, well, thank, thank you for your work. Your name, sir? My name's Brandon. Thank you, man. Duvio. Appreciate it.
That's also that's my bags over there, my, my food and stuff. That's mine. That's yes, food and stuff. Okay, I'm sorry.
Jersey. Not the tunnel. Holland Tunnel, yes. You go up. Yeah. Oh, you going? Here. I'm a new stringer, man. I'm a new stringer. Here, get my ID. I got my, I got a press pass, I have ID. I'm doing, I'm doing a document on D11. This is me. I'm doing a documentary on D11. That's what I do. I do a documentary on, I'm doing a documentary on D11. D11? Sorry, uh, 9-11. But I, but I, I do, I, the site is Venice D11. I'm known and uh, I'm legal. What's the document about? About 9-11. I'm staying at the Millennium right. Hotel right now. From where? Excuse me? From where? From where what? Where are you from? Where I'm from? I'm from uh, California. Where? California. California. So what do you think? I'm doing something illegal? No, no. Okay. So what's your opinion on 9-11 what's your opinion on, on, on and, and the... Uh... I never really think about it. Oh, okay. allow themselves to get caught up in just a, a small fragment of nothing, really. We you here for 9-11? Well, I like to say about 9-11, I'm here to really show my respect for the people who have lost their lives down to towers and also knowing that we're still living in parallel times in our country and due to the fact that we are in our 10th anniversary, I think everybody in the United States, I think everybody, rather New Yorkers, should come out and celebrate this event because um, a lot of loved ones has been killed behind this. Um, we have went through so many financial turmoils behind it. Our government has been totally deteriorated. Um, there's really no security here in the United States anymore that you can really say is actual security. We're just living by ear and just by mouth. You know? What did 9-11 do to you? Well, with 9-11 did to me, it did a lot of things to me. It um, it made me go through some changes in life. Um, I had went through some struggles, you know, and I'm still going through it. You know, I just thank God that I lived through it, you know, and still living through it. Because to me, 9-11 still exists. You know, it's very hard to just take those memories and just erase it out your mind. Did you, uh, did you do any kind of like therapy behind 9-11? Well, I didn't get a chance to. Because at the time, I wasn't really focusing on, you know, exactly the actual event. I thought it just happened to a particular group, but not knowing that that event had also affected my life, too, in so many different ways. Because when that happened, our government had totally had to collapse. I mean, it's when it came to national security and, and all kinds of issues, it was like at hand. You know, because there was no records, and if it was records, they was destroyed, and others got created. So it was so much impact, not just only upon the economy and the government, but also on the security of the citizens' protections also. I mean, we had computer glitches, and then this and that, and before you know it, then we start getting so many different type of terrorism that, you know, formed and existed. Here and not even in our country, but here in our own in our own land of New York City, and yet these 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 matters is like being like totally like hidden, you know, like it doesn't exist, but in reality, it exists. 
It's just nobody's really paying focus to it or paying attention because it's not being done like, you know, others go, it's being allowed, you know, and it's a big difference of being attacked and being allowed. So I think we need to really like step on our game. This not only just for international terrorism, but we ought to also focus on domestic terrorism as well because that is still at hand and it still exists here, even in New York City. What's your name, sir? My name is Mr. Day. Thank you. So, those guys. So, sir, your name? David. So, David, uh, what do you have here? What's this piece? These are uh, 3D printed models, uh, computer files that are physical form. That's unbelievable, man. It was precise, you know? Where were you on 9-11? I was in Boston. And, and how did 9-11 affect you? Not much differently than a typical American. Yeah. You know, not, not in an intimate way. So. Yeah, but you made this piece over here, and this piece says it all. Yeah, long lasting, you know? Long-lasting effect. I'm still bothered by the whole thing. I have to tell you that I've been looking at the construction straight now for years. My friend is at 150 um, Broadway at the old transportation building on the 42nd story. And I was there one day, a, about a year after the towers came down, yeah. and I watched them recover remains. After watching the same steady plotting, digging, burning, and the smoke, I turned around, and all of a sudden there was a flurry of activity, and it was reported in the press that day that they had found a bunch of, of remains, the first remains they had found in more than a year. Well, you got the airplane there. Um, well, just to, um, you know, this is kind of just give you the time. We go to one station, they teach us CPR, we go to the next station, they teach us, then they put us on a bus and they were moving us over and over and over and we were going to go down and into the, into the rubble and then they stopped and they said we have to wait because seven is coming down and we watched that go down and then they said no, it's going to be a long time because the fires are out of control. So they said come back about seven. So I went home. And then we had no electricity, yeah. and I knew I couldn't stay, so yeah. I got on my bike and I, and I went uptown. Well, I left, yeah. I walked up about, it would have been, see when we went down, what, about four? Yeah, four or five minutes. So it was after that when we lost our electricity, right. so it was about six o'clock that I walked up the hmm. West, up, um, West Broadway, actually, with um, all these firefighters just covered yeah. and stuff, yeah. and we were, walked up to Florence restaurant to meet him and have dinner because everything down here was closed and when I realized that there was no, no power and no water. Right. So the tower when there was no water. You guys, you guys get therapy for that? Get what? Therapy. Yes. You know I did I I went to see a psychiatrist once and um, just one time and I said to her I was just telling Amy this, I said to her, I'm being Absolutely ridiculous. I cry every day. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I was pregnant, and I'm like, I'm just being pregnant and emotional and ridiculous. I don't know anyone that died. And the psychiatrist said to me, Look, you saw two plane crashes. You saw dozens of people committing suicide, jumping out of buildings. You saw thousands of people have died. You felt like you were in an earthquake. You were evicted from your home. There'd be something seriously wrong with you if you weren't up yeah. there. <laughs> and the minute the psychiatrist said that to me, I. I stopped beating up on myself it, for yeah. not having the right to feel yeah. upset yeah. 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 and felt so much better when I stopped crying.
this ceremony, just right. determining who will speak and how many people will be allowed in. It's a, it's a tricky task because there's many people who want to get here and, uh, you know, only a certain number that this site can hold. Recognizing some of the people from the, the Tribute Center, mm -hmm. too, uh, as, as they've worked so hard to get this site. They've been racing the clock to, to get everything ready down there because there's still so much construction around them, I mean, even with with their best efforts. Uh, the, the, those efforts have been hampered by everything else that's going on. The, the pace of construction is tremendous. Right, and you realize that the work that... Uh Again, we're not sure how much uh, how much audio we're going to get. I don't want to enter it on, on private moments, but uh, we never quite know what uh, what they're sending us from. This is a full camera that's available to all the, the networks, and we were hoping to hear a little bit of what the president was saying. There. Yeah, and then you see that the president was just speaking with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Uh,
to speak. Um, you know, he was told originally that he had to get down from the pile. You pulled, I guess uh, one of the officials came up and said, you need to pull them up, and whoever you pull up, then you get down. But President Bush said at the time, he said, no, you stand up here with me. And they've become best friends. Yeah, Time Magazine so, this week published a, a photo of the two of them together. They went something like yeah, time. Yeah. These look like they may be. Some family? Oh, no, that's, those are the Bush girls. Amazing hat. What does that mean to you, sir? Everything. Tell, tell us. Um, give me one second. Okay, sorry. Uh, 
I was a first responder that's you know with a city agency and um, the hat just represents everything from the beginning from the Twin Towers this side was kind of like dedicated to all of law enforcement between Port Authority who lost their 37 and IPD who lost their 23 uh, on this side is all the firefighters some of the ground some of the from some of the iron workers I have some of that and because it was a terrorist attack in the back of the hat is one of the servicemen wow. who got activated because of 9-11 and uh, just ending the war finding the people who caused the who caused the tragedy and uh, the hat is kind of dedicated to all of them those who have died during 9-11 and everybody who is dying because of 9-11. And how are you holding up? One day at a time. Did, did you get therapy or anything after, after that happened? I did so get some therapy, uh, but it's never the same, you know. It, it's not like, I was here this, I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. Wow. Uh, but I do this every year. Every year? Every year since, from working to the point of they no longer needed cops to patrol the outer perimeters. And then from there, it was just being going down to ground zero, paying my respects to friends that I've lost because of 9-11 uh, on the day of and the months afterwards. And uh, I myself, I kind of felt a little ill, came across asthma, never had a doesn't run to the family. Does from the smoke, right? Yeah. What's your thoughts on the uh, lights? I hope they never stop. Yeah. I hope they. I hope they never. I hope they never stop running. Uh, from the point of they say that this build, uh, Liberty Tower is supposed to be be completed by uh, 2013. Even if it does become erected, I hope they never turn off these lights. Even the fact that we do have waterfall there, I hope they keep on continuing with the lights. The lights are they're like healing for you. They are comforting, you know, just having the ability to look up at the stars and you know, at the same time, too, I see some of the fireflies because of the whole towers and I think of them as people, you know, just as they're floating around around the towers, the lights oh, of the very, towers. Very, very spiritual. Yes. Now, me. sum it up. Give us your final word, something that comes from the heart. Uh, console one another and love one another because you never know what's going to happen. Any name, sir? I'd rather keep that. Uh, okay. Alex. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, sir. Sorry.
they were in Texas for business. There were some companies, Unical and some other ones, Enron was involved. They wanted to make a pipeline through their country. And they were making negotiations. Every time they come here, they insult the women a lot. But they were still, you know, uh, doing business. And then when there weren't enough al-Qaeda to fight in Afghanistan, they made the Taliban the new enemy. Because so it depend on the interests. That's true, yes. Also, before we even invaded this country, Afghanistan, the Taliban made an offering. They said, State Department, if you give us information to connect bin Laden to the attacks, then we'll give you him, you can make a trial for him somewhere else. And the State Department says, no, thank you. But today, the Secretary of State, the very top one, she says the only way we can leave Afghanistan to take our troops away is to negotiate with the Taliban to make diplomacy. And so you see, we choose the war, and then afterwards they do the same thing. It's it's a tragedy. Are you uh, are you uh, from NGU? From where? You are NGU. N N J U. What do you mean? No, 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 NGO. I have I have a friend who was working for one for a while. Now he's not there anymore. Thank you. No problem. You all right? Yeah. Like, like the view? Yeah, it's fantastic. Very nice. Yeah. I couldn't tell you my emotions right now. I couldn't tell you. I, I feel sad. I feel I got a lot of emotions right now going through my mind. I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm looking every year. We were right there at the Twin Towers, man. Now I'm not there anymore. Amazing. The hotel right here, Millennium, staying here.
This is your free speech zone. How so much sense does that make? We're going into a cage and say, and we sat outside and we were talking, and the cops come up to us and said, You're not allowed to talk out here. This is your free speech zone. He said, If you want to talk about this, how is this a free speech zone? We walk up here and put all these barricades around us. We can talk through a cage taste. I want to investigate I don't want to investigate it. What they're saying is a lie. So what's your point? Prepare yourself to meet your maker. You are living in the last days. Why do you say that? Can I say that? Yeah. Are you alive? Excuse me? Are you alive? Yeah, I'm alive, yeah. Do you see the signs of the end times? Flood all over the world, earthquakes, famines, wickedness, violence, wars. Yeah. Rebelliousness, no holiness at all. No righteousness at all, no obedience at all, absolute darkness. Yeah, but, but freedom of speech is good. Say it again? Freedom of speech. That's beautiful. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great country, man. I agree. I mean, you're here, you're here dressed up like that. I agree after with you. At 9-11, but freedom of, speech is, freedom of speech is saving you, you know? Saving me doesn't, freedom of speech doesn't save me. Give me some freedom. No. It's, it's not a great country, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good country. Listen to me. I will not change this country but with the rest of the world. This is fact. And may God bless this country, especially for the freedom that I enjoy on this land. Right on, man. Well, it's, it's good that you're out here because it shows that we, we do have freedom of speech. You know what I mean? So, it's, it's 9-11. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you should be out here, but it's, it's freedom of speech, so you gotta be out here. I shouldn't be out here at 9 11. You know what I mean. You know. Oh. I should not be here. I don't represent, but Christ. And Christ, my Lord says, go to the whole world. I got any you. Day. I got you. Any day, any time. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much.
Sorry. Well, I'm telling you, he's wrong. Okay. Okay. More and more people are waking up to Building 7. And they come on set, not the biggest dogs building our mechanics. They come on set. That's what it is. Nope. Building 7 is the key to 9 11, people. Here. Anybody want to feel Yeah, I do. <laughs> Here. Look up Building 7. That's the key. Building 7. Can I get one? Building 7 is the key that will eventually break the truth you, open sir. about 9 11. They don't want to talk about Building 7. What about Building 7? I don't know about Building 7. I don't know about Building 7. What about Building 7? Building 7 was right here. It, it fell down on 9 11. It was the third tower to come down. How did it fall down? How did it fall down? Yeah. I think it was blown up. It came down in six seconds. How does a building fall down in six seconds? Are you getting some shots of your hand and pins out? Because that's what I came here to do. The whole media, the entire United States media is owned by three corporations. They completely control our media. Everything you see on the media is a charade. It's a choreographed news report. Every day on the news, what you see is choreographed. They're reading from a script or they're saying what's being told to them inside their headphones. And they're not allowed to talk about Building 7 on the air. Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, none of them. They are not allowed to show you a video of Building 7 coming down. If you go up to 10 people on the street and you say, excuse me, sir or madam, have you ever heard of Building 7? You will be lucky to find two people out of every 10 people in the United States of America who even know about Building 7 that it came down on 9-11. Why say, is that? Let's say, let's say Why you, is that? Let's say you, you, uh, you Google a name. Cover up, right? Let's say you Google a name. You Google, a name. You Google it. You Google WTC7. And what happens? You watch the video of it. There's videos. There's a thousand videos wow. of Building 7 online. You can watch it. Okay. It was shot from three or four different angles at 5.20 p.m. on the evening of 9-11, the same day the towers came down. Building 7 came down at 5.20 in the afternoon. It came straight down in a controlled implosion right into its own footprint. Mm. And they rebuilt, that was the Solomon Brothers building. It's right here? And they rebuilt it right away. They've already rebuilt Building 7. There's already a brand new Building 7. Where? I don't know, but right I know they rebuilt the it. Tower. See that one? Yeah. That's wow. Yeah, that's number 7, the one that looks like a razor. Uh -huh. Bu building 7 was 47 stories wow. high, and it was as big as a city block. Okay? And it had a, it, and a lot of people don't know it, but after the Trade Center was hit in 1993, they built a command and control bunker on one of the floors of Building 7. And Giuliani, he didn't go to that bunker on 9-11. He went to a delicatessen instead. So they knew Building 7 was coming down. My own theory is Flight 93, my, the one that they say was those died in Shanksville, that was supposed to hit Building 7. But it got shot down by friendly fire. It didn't nosedive into the ground like they're telling you because the debris field is four and a half miles long. You can do your own research. How does a plane nosedive into the ground and completely vaporize, not leaving any bodies, any luggage, any so, significant parts so, of the so, plane? So what's your theory about what really happened in 911 and why? I, my own theory is that the group known as PNAC, P-N-A-C, which is the um, something for the new American century, okay? They were saying way back about a year and a half before 9-11 happened that the only way the United States could stay in control of the oil would be another Pearl Harbor type event. They wrote that in their own report. The people who were on PNAC were people like Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, Wolfowitz, a whole bunch of them. Okay, they all eventually found themselves in the Bush administration. Well, next thing you know, we have 9-11. And then what happens after 9-11? Now we're in Iraq, Afghanistan. I mean, why are we in Afghanistan? They only discovered two trillion dollars worth of lithium there. What's gonna power the next generation electric cars? Lithium batteries. So that's why we're in Afghanistan, for the poppy fields. Afghanistan is the number one producer of opium in the world. Check it out. for electric cars too, yeah. Yeah, you need, you need poppy. Where's my free, where's my free heroin? Well, lithium. Yeah. Where's my fruit, where's my cheap gas? I think he's crazy.
let's actually ask the documents, right? Like, we have this ability, this open information act that is still available right now. So where are these wiretaps at? Where's the documentation at? Because 10 years now, we don't have the ability to access that. There aren't that many, which is actually proof. You have a bigger chance of being killed from a lightning strike. A shark attack, you're getting flung by a bee. You can assume that the government is actually attempting to overstep that. I agree we should look into it, but who's going to police? And when that happens, we have government. Like, we have reporters. I don't. They aren't finding anything. That's a big deal. They just act that. It's vile. Let's look at one of the big things that came out of the Iraq war. It's going to get worse. Like Saddam's WMDs. We didn't find WMDs. You have one star in your car? We didn't, and we very much criticized George Bush for that. And yet we aren't finding criticism. I mean, for any of this. The reason for that is because there isn't any criticism to be found. But see, that's the thing. The mainstream media criticizes what needs to be criticized. We've seen that throughout right the past now, eight right years right. that we had George Bush. Right. Right. When that happens, you're all who cops to look at that right now is, yeah. is the one to keep right. the government right. accountable, so and they've done that, November? especially in the what? recent did history. At that point in time, did why are you questioning that? I don't think mainstream media has held the government accountable. How not? George Bush is rating plummeted, and right now, President Obama, who most of us here would probably back, his ratings aren't even that big. So yes, there's a reason for that, and my own personal opinion is because it's not true. You know who won the debate the other night? It's not that the conspiracy theory hasn't been put on to you. They don't even talk. Hey, Mike, what are you doing? Hey, Mike, what are you doing? Hey, Mike, what are you to meet him. Wow. Is Sad like why the dance see you? You, you like the new uh, water, waterfalls? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we saw him today. Did you see the president and everything? Mm -hmm. Yes. Bush and... Uh, cool. Yep. 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 Yeah. Okay, thank you ladies. Yeah, thank bye you. Bye. Yeah. Well, my name is Susan Gorin. I'm a village denizen. And these pictures were taken from a sailboat before the trade towers fell and the tragedy occurred. That day? They were taken several years before, but I have these pictures to show how it looked before the tragedy. So this is one, and this shows what it looked like from the sailboat. And you out there uh, sailing with friends? Sailing with my friend Scott. Do you always do that? He's a sea captain. He's got a captain's license, and we used to go all the time. And we would go under the Verrazano Bridge and out to Coney Island and lots of other places. And these photographs, beginning here, this is my last shot of the towers before oh, all the trouble. You, you took that shot? I took these shots. Wow. And this was the day the tragedy came. And as you can see, the tower is burning, and it was a very move, difficult move. thing. Wow. And when the towers started to burn, everyone came out on the street in the village. They were all really horrified and really, really frightened, I think. And this is what it looked like as the towers were burning over University Place looking south Who took into these? Soho. I took oh, all of on. these. All of these. These That's are amazing. my shots. And this is Midtown New York. Oh, sorry. This is still Greenwich Village during the collapse of the first building. 
And as you can see, there were two, and then there was only one. And this was the beginning of the real tragedy, because until then, life was not lost in great numbers. But once this happened, everyone that was still inside the buildings were doomed. And as you can see, this is looking over Washington Square, and then... Where? Uh, this is up University Place, looking at NYU's library, and oh, this is, is when the second building fell. Well, then there. And wow. here you can see, up Fifth Avenue, then it was gone, and the travelers had fallen. Wow. So how, how do you deal with that? I just took one look and thought, this is going to be a terrible tragedy. Many people will have lost their okay. lives, and there will be people see, everywhere. See. You took these two? A woman gave me these pictures when I was developing the previous ones, and I gave her some of them. Okay. She was down at the Trade Tower as things were collapsing. Let's and see. in fact, this is the Millennium, the building that we're in right now. Where? Right here. Are you kidding? Let me see. Yeah, this was the original Millennium. Where's it at? It was right on this corner, I believe. Wow. They had to, you know, recreate the damage, etc. Was, was there a lot of damage in the hotel? Yeah, I think like there was what? a lot of damage. Well, I wasn't inside, I don't know, but Let me see. this is important because this is when right. the move, first move. tower you gotta keep the fell. Picture straight. Right, the moment the tragedy hit. The planes were horrific, but when the building started to fall, all the people on the streets panicked, and all the dust started showering down. She, she people, was that close, the lady? People went running for their lives, literally. No, but the, the lady who took the shot? Yeah. She was that close? She was that close. And what did she do? She ran she for her life. Ran for her life. You see this. So that's the hotel we're in right now. Yeah, that's where the Millennium is, and this is the collapse. That's, a, well, that's amazing, man. Of Can you imagine being in this hotel then? Right. This, this is, is scary. the collapse of the North Tower. And this is what happened in the village after the fact, when people created memorials on the streets of New York. Yeah, I saw that on television. It was, it was really uh, amazing. This is Washington Square and University Place right after the towers fell and the next day. And this is Houston Street looking down LaGuardia Place into West Broadway when nothing was still standing. It looks so empty. Yeah. And these are the tributes that people drew in Washington Square on sheets that they hung to memorialize the loss and to get out their anger on Osama bin Laden. And these people, instead of having anger, showed love. Oh, let me see. It's beautiful. And this is Midtown that same week when things were still closed and businesses didn't open. And this is in Midtown. All the construction workers oh, that, that oh, were working oh. hung flags. That's, a, that's a beautiful. And this is the Ground Zero site Hold it. a year Let after. See. It's a year after? Mm-hmm. It fell in September, and this was when I went downtown to do my taxes. And this is a view from my uncle's office looking right down on the site. Oh, let me look. Wow. That's so sad. It is so sad. That, that's the scale of the, that's the, scale of the World Trade Room. Exactly, that's it. Okay, wait a minute. Let me get closer. Mm. And this is the remaining towers, the small ones, other number World Trade, between two and seven. Seven still there? The Seven is the one that, le that they just rebuilt. This yeah, but is the one. Uh, it's, it's there? No, nope, you can't see it here. Gone. Done. These are other buildings in between those numbers. Lower and in between. And this is back to the site itself. Let me see. And you took these? Your friends took these? I took all of these. Wow. All of these pictures, except for this few close-ups. You didn't need no uh, therapy after that? No, but I was pretty depressed, like a lot of New Yorkers. And this is what it looks like when you come into New York now. When they first built the towers and they stood here, 
I always thought they ruined the New York skyline. But all of us got used to the buildings, the Twin Towers. And once they were gone, we were always looking for them yeah. everywhere. And they're gone. And this is what it looks like from the battery now when you drive in from the Staten Island Ferry. It's a really empty space. Right. And none of the towers are there. Down here is coming over the bridge from Brooklyn. You see? And looking for the trade towers, and again, they're not there. But it looks peaceful, even though it was a horror story. You see? See, I thought they were, uh, when I had my breakdown, I thought they were still there. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you'd go to the park and still see them, you know? Yes. I wouldn't, yes. I wouldn't uh, believe it was gone, even though I knew it was gone. And this last shot of the site was a couple of months later, when they, they were starting to do construction. See. And the very last page in this book is what I wrote in Washington Square as the daughter of a World War II veteran who was in the Battle of the Bulge, I wrote, never forget the price of freedom, because that's what this was all about. People who had no freedom trying to take away our freedom. So what's your, what's your opinion on, on, on uh, the new, on the, on the new uh, structure? I think this is a stunning building. I think it is architecturally so advanced compared to the original buildings, it's extraordinary. Why do you say that? The lighting, the structure of the building, the way it triangles, and then it narrows up top. It's just a beautiful design. What about the, uh, the waterfalls? The building is nice, but the waterfalls are extraordinary. The sound of the water, I can't wait to go and see it. The sound of the water must be so fantastic. Water is very calming and very, very good for people who are under stress. Just like the sound of the ocean is yes. good for people, I think that these waterfalls must be extraordinary when you're sitting down there. How do you feel about seeing this now? I'm very excited to see it. It's the first time. And I'm looking forward to getting a ticket and going in there when the tickets are available. you have any final words? Sorry? Do you have any final words? Final words. I think that the, the lesson to be learned from all of this is that you can't keep New Yorkers down, and that no one in this country, even though they were shocked at the attack on our soil, no one here is giving in. No one here is going to stop trying to make the world a better place and to make more people have freedom. Many of them do not. What's your opinion on, on the new mayor? The mayor is not somebody who can find me among his fans. What's his name? Mr. Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg is a money man. He's not a people person. And he is very arrogant, and he is very self-important, and he thinks he knows it all. And I don't think so. I hear a squirrel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The sand cut allowed by the unions had not been enough to keep the show running, so the company agrees to give up another 25%.